hello hello welcome to the premiere of season two of everyday living recipes with love podcast i am so excited to be back i've missed you all so much and i can't wait to share some very new recipes now what i did for season two for most of it is i'm reading out of the same cookbook as season one i'm just have found the back side of the cookbook had casseroles and crockpot recipes, so I thought maybe start season two as a fall recipe kind of episodes. Um, I love fall, and it was my favorite season, so I thought, well, let's just do it this way and see how many new recipes we can share, because some of these I didn't even know about. And so I can't wait to share with you guys the ones that I found. And it's just so exciting all together. And I cannot believe that it's October already. This year has going, is going so fast. The kids are back in school. Both of my kids are in school now. And so I have a little more free time. Not much, but a little more free time to be doing a podcast on the side. So I thought, well, let's just start now. And I can't wait to start today. I have about four recipes to share today. So let's dive right in. Okay, so let's just say these recipes have no name on them. I just want to start out with this first before I read them. I don't have anybody to credit. Um, I really don't. So... If I did have someone to credit, I would I would say a name. I'm sure somebody came up with these recipes. And if you hear this on this podcast and you know who the person is that contributed the recipes, I would really like to know so I can do a shout out to them or give them credit for their recipes. But this is just a podcast where I'm sharing the recipes. So I just want to make that clear before we start and begin. Now, the very first recipe that we're going to start with today is called All-American Cheese Steak. Now, I found this interesting because I'm like, what is that? So I started reading it, and I thought, you know, that sounds really good. And so I wanted to share it because I might even try it for my fall recipe lineup. <laughs> so it does include for the meat, these are all beef ones. This includes round steak. So if you're not a fan of round steak, I personally sometimes aren't a fan of round steak, but in the right recipes, it's really good. So I thought I might give it another try with this recipe and I might try it out. So we're going to get started now. If you're just joining and you haven't watched season one and you don't know how this podcast kind of operates, I will read the ingredient list twice. Then I will read the instructions on how to do it. And usually I read them twice too. It depends on how long they are, but I might read the instructions twice too, but that's how I do it. And if you're a new listener, welcome. I'm really happy to have you listening. Now we're going to start with the ingredient list of all American cheese steak. Now this is, well, I guess you want to like call it a casserole. You just kind of cook it, I guess, in the skillet, but we're just going to share it anyway and start off because I thought it was really unique. Now the rest of these recipes on here will be casseroles. This one's just kind of the oddball out, but <laughs> I thought, well, maybe we'll just start off with it. But I promise you, the rest of them are casseroles. So you need one and a half pounds of round steak, half inch thick. So you're going to cut them half inch thick. You need a half a cup of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, a fourth a teaspoon of pepper, three tablespoons of oil, one medium onion sliced, and one 15 half ounce jar spaghetti sauce and one cup of Monterey Jack cheese shredded. Now that is really good cheese. I like Monterey Jack in a lot of dishes. It has just a really good flavor. So 
Here's the ingredient list one more time. One and a half pounds of round steak, cut half an inch thick, half a cup of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, a fourth a teaspoon of pepper, three tablespoons of oil, one medium onion sliced, one 15 half ounce jar of spaghetti sauce, and one cup of Monterey Jack cheese shredded. Cut steak into six servings. Combine flour, salt, and pepper. Dredge steak and flour mixture. Rub it on or pound it with a saucer edge. Add oil to the skillet and brown meat over medium heat. Drain off oil. Top with onion slices. Pour spaghetti sauce over and cover. Simmer for 45 minutes or until tender. Arrange meat on platter and top with cheese. Serve sauce with noodles or rice. So that is that recipe. Um, I will repeat, I guess, the instructions one more time. And then we're going to move on to the first casserole. So you cut steak in six servings. Combine flour, salt, and pepper. Dredge steak in a flour mixture. Rub it on or pound in with sauce edge. Saucer edge, sorry. Add oil to the skillet and brown meat over medium heat. Drain off oil, top with onion slices, pour spaghetti sauce over and cover. Simmer for 45 minutes or until tender. Arrange meat on platter and top with cheese. Serve sauce with noodles or rice. So I think with this one, I would probably pick noodles because noodles would go really good with the flavors. I think I would probably pick like an egg noodle or something. I would personally think that would be the best. But rice is really good too, so whatever you prefer, but that's just what I would probably put in it. That sounds really good. You know, I just had to have an oddball recipe to start with. That's just who I am, right? <laughs> the little weird side. So the next recipe, round steak bake. So this is a casserole, and you just put it in a baking dish, which I'm assuming a 9 by 13. It doesn't say the size, but um, you wrap it in foil and then you put it in a baking dish. So it is a casserole. A little iffy in some things to me, but if it's flavored right and it's with the right things, I think it can be really amazing. So you need one package of round steak boneless, six slices of bacon browned, crumbled, two cans of mushroom pieces drained, one package of onion soup mix, one can of golden mushroom soup, and then mustard. Now you know me from season one. If you watch season one, I mean listen to season one, you know that I'm very picky. So I wouldn't like the mushrooms in it. I don't like cream of mushroom either, but I wanted to share these recipes because they just, ones I've never heard of before. And I just thought sharing them would be the best. So, <laughs> again, the ingredients are one package of round steak, boneless, six slices of bacon browned, crumbled, two cans of mushroom pieces drained, one package of onion soup mix, one can of golden mushroom soup, and mustard. So you spread round steak with mustard. Pour over onion soup mix. One can mushrooms and crumbled bacon. Roll steak like a jelly roll. Lay on foil, seam side down. Pour over golden mushroom soup and other can of mushrooms. Wrap in foil and place in a baking dish. Bake for four to five hours on 250. Slice and serve. So that was a casserole that I thought, well, maybe if I took the mushrooms out, maybe we could find a different cream of something to put in it, you know? So that is that recipe. Now the next one will be one that I really was curious about when I read and it is like a taco bake. Now everybody loves tacos, right? Beef tacos are the best. Now sometimes I like the chicken better, but this recipe sounds so good minus the salsa. But you can use like a taco sauce or a, how do you pronounce it, a um, piconate sauce. <laughs> I tried. 
it's that jar sauce you can get that's not so chunky. But if you do like like a chunky kind of dish, the chunky salsa is also something you can use. So um, you do have a choice, which I like. I think the sauce would be a better option for me because it's not chunky. So I really like that about this. It's kind of customizable if you're picky. So that's a really big plus for me. So this is called the Campbell's Beef Taco Bake. And it sounds delish. So you need one pound of ground beef, one ten three-fourths ounce can of Campbell's Condensed Tomato Soup, one cup of paste, thick and chunky salsa, or the picanet sauce. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm trying. Um, a half a cup of milk and six eight ounce flour tortillas or eight six inch corn tortillas you cut into one inch pieces. And then you need one cup of cheddar cheese because, yes, you need the cheese on it. It's not a taco without shredded cheese. So you're going to put this all in a medium skillet over medium high heat. You cook beef until browned, stirring to separate meat. Pour off fat, add soup, salsa, milk, tortillas, and half the cheese. Spoon into two-quart shallow baking dish. Cover and bake at 400 degrees for 30 minutes or until hot. Sprinkle with remaining cheese and mix four servings. So, I will repeat all that again. But, just to say now, I think I would use... The corn tortillas in this. I'm a really big fan of the flour tortillas, but I just think the corn ones sound a little better on this recipe. So that's what I would use because it gives you a choice on the shells too. So I just wanted to give my little opinion. Now I think that a tomato soup would really give it flavor. I think that it's very unique and... <laughs> I've never heard of it, so I thought, well, let's do this recipe because I'm like, what kind of flavor would tomato sauce, tomato sauce, <laughs> sorry, tomato soup give a taco dish? Because I've never heard of it, so I thought, well, that sounds really good. So, um, the milk would kind of, yeah, that would kind of bring some more creaminess to it and kind of mellow out the spicy like sauce or something I think that's why they have the milk in it which is a really nice feature because sometimes things are just too tomato based and spicy <laughs> so now it just says milk so I'm sure whatever milk you drink or prefer in your dishes is probably fine so we're gonna go through that one one more time and I think I have one more I'm not really sure but so Campbell's beef taco bake one pound of ground beef one ten three-fourths ounce can of Campbell's condensed tomato soup one cup of paste thick and chunky salsa or the picnic sauce half a cup of milk six eight ounce flour tortillas or eight six inch corn tortillas you cut into one inch pieces and then one cup of cheddar cheese shredded. And then a medium skillet over medium high heat. Cook beef until browned. Stirring to separate meat. Pour off fat. Add soup, salsa, milk, tortillas. Half the cheese. Spoon into two quart shallow baking dish. You cover it and you bake it at 400 degrees. For 30 minutes or until hot. Sprinkle with remaining cheese. Makes four servings. Now I'm definitely making this recipe. If anyone else is going to make this recipe, please, please, please share in the comments wherever you're watching this. I mean, listening to this. I always say watching. I'm so sorry. Listening to the podcast, wherever you're listening to it, like Facebook, YouTube, um, Spotify. I think you can put a question or something on Spotify. I'm not really sure how you interact on Spotify. Never really done it. But email me even with your 
reviews on this recipe. I'm really excited to try it out. So I think I have one more. The next and last recipe for season two's premiere, episode one, is creamy potatoes and steak. Now this one is another casserole. And the rest of these I found for the next episode are crock pot beef recipes that sound really yummy too. This one is just basically what it says. It's potatoes and steak. It's pretty easy. Um, it's round steaks again. <laughs> I should have named this episode round steak recipes, right? Okay, so you need one 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup. Four to six medium potatoes, thinly sliced. I usually prefer red potatoes. They're a little healthier option than the just basic russet potatoes. Yellow potatoes, I think, are healthy, but I think the healthiest option is red. So we really like the flavor of red potatoes. So that's what we would use. It doesn't say what potatoes, so you just use whatever ones. Two to four round steaks. One 10 ounce can cream of celery soup, salt, pepper, and sage to taste. I have never tried cream of celery in any dish that I've ever had. Um, I don't know. I really don't like celery, but does it have like big chunks of celery in it? I don't, I don't know much about it. The flavor doesn't sound too bad, but I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> so, um, I do not like cream of mushroom. So I'm probably not trying this one because I don't know what you would substitute the cream and mushroom for that would give it the same flavor. So I'm probably out on this one. But for people that like those things, this might be your absolute favorite new try for fall. So you layer half the mushroom soup in a greased 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Add a third of the potatoes the remaining mushroom soup, and the remaining potatoes. Arrange the steak on top. Cover with celery soup. Add the seasonings. Bake at 350 for one to one and a half hours or until the potatoes are tender. You may substitute one small chicken or six ounce tenderized steak for the round steak. This one makes four servings too, so... The four serving recipes probably wouldn't work for our house, but maybe it would. It just seems like it makes too much. We're not that big of eaters, so it would make a lot. Um, so I will repeat this one one more time, and then I'm going to kind of uh, explain or talk about some other things before we end it. Creamy potatoes and steak, one 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup, four to six medium potatoes thinly sliced, two to four round steaks, one 10 ounce can of cream of celery soup, and salt and pepper and sage to taste. Layer half the mushroom soup in a greased 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Add third of the potatoes the remaining mushroom soup, and the remaining potatoes. Arrange the steak on top. Cover with celery soup. Add the seasonings. Bake at 350 for one to one and a half hours or until the potatoes are tender. You may substitute one small chicken or six ounce tenderized steak for the round steak. Yield four servings. Now, I really like at the end where it tells you you can substitute the round steak um, for more tenderized steak that you like. I don't know really what steak I would pick, but if you don't really like the round steak consistency, you could pick any steak or a chicken. But I think if it was me, I would pick like a another kind of cut of steak because I think the beef is going to give it a little more flavor. So that is all the recipes. I am just super excited to be back, you guys. I have missed being able to create these episodes for you. It is so much fun. And 
I just love sharing these things with you. And so I wanted to um, take a moment to express my gratitude for all the listeners and all the fans of this podcast. Because without you, I wouldn't probably be here making this content. Um, I really enjoyed hearing from everybody on season one. I hope I hear from new people on season two. I just can't believe that it's gone this far with how many episodes I have created. Um, I just can't wait. When I found the backside of this cookbook, I was just so thrilled and so, so, so excited to kind of read through them. And I realized that most of these recipes are really unique to me. And I thought, you know, I would love to share them with everybody because the experience of sharing with people is just so amazing because you get to hear everybody's thoughts and everybody's opinions. And I just love that. And I try to give my opinions on every episode, which I just really enjoy it. And I'm so glad I'm back. And I'm so glad that it's fall time. (laughs) The kids are back at school. And I just cannot believe the summer has just gone by so fast. And it's October. It is almost time for Halloween. And I can't wait to dress up my kids again. And my kids are just growing up so fast. And I would like to hear down below wherever you're watching. I always say it. Watching. You know, I'm just going to say it watching because... (laughs) You're basically watching, but just listening. I'm just going to go with it. Um, But I just, if you're watching this, I just would love to hear what you're dressing your kids as this year of 2023 Halloween. Um, My kids always like it to be a surprise, so we never really give it away or tell anybody until they go trick-or-treating. It's kind of the fun of it all. but they are super excited to go out. And my youngest is just getting so much into everything now. And it's just so heartwarming to see. She's just a little fireball. <laughs> um, so I just love it. And I just wanted to say I can't wait to experience season two with everybody. And I am really excited for the next episode. Crockpot recipes are the way to go. I would also like to hear down below if you prefer crockpot or casseroles. Um, They're both really easy ways to make quick and easy recipes. Everybody knows my pick already. It's the crockpot. <laughs> I just love it so much better. You just put it in the morning and it's all cooking during the day and you don't have to worry. And I love that. And so that's my choice. But other people might like the casseroles. I do like them. You just put them in a pan. Um, my favorite casserole is probably is a taco bake. It's really not a bake. It's like a taco pie that I've made recently that I really liked. Um, you just get a pie pan and you put Pillsbury pie dough that's already made in the pie pan. And you season your ground beef and then you put it in there. And then you put cheese or whatever you like on top or whatever you prefer on your tacos and you like close it up. It is so good. Um, That was one of my favorites that I've had more recently. But I would like to hear everyone else's favorites down below. And um, I can't wait to share season two with you and... The episode two will be out. This is every Tuesday. There will be episodes um, uploaded to Facebook and Spotify and YouTube, however you like to watch. I will probably work on doing, most people do this on YouTube where they, um, what's it called? Like they have a video of it. I might start getting into that this season, maybe halfway through. Um, It's really out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to try it. Um, That's my plan anyway, to get to the point where I will try it. So um, I really, really am thankful for every 
one of you that have enjoyed my podcast so far and are excited for season two. And um, I'm just so blessed. And I wanted to say my thank yous on here. And I'm just so happy. Um, So I'll see you next week. Um, However you watch, Spotify, YouTube, or Facebook. And I will talk to you guys soon.